Hey guys, Mike from Magnanimous here, and we're back live in Studio One for another build of the, the day. Today, we're going to be taking a look at an interesting tool called an Interatron, which is going to utilize our AutoQ 17 inch teleprompter to put an interviewer's face in front of our camera, very much like we had done before with the iDirect, but this can be done from a much longer distance and your interviewer doesn't have to be standing right next to the uh, tripod. So it gives you a lot more creative freedom to put your interviewer subject uh, in either another room or somewhere else in the room that you're currently in to try and keep everything uh, spread out more and more comfortable for everyone uh, involved. Uh, as always, if you guys have questions during the live stream, comment below and we'll do our best to answer those at the end of the video, or we can answer them in chat after. And then if there's anything that you want to see, comment below and let me know, and we'll highlight those down the road in future videos, as I want to highlight the gear that you guys are interested in. So let me know what you want to see, and we'll use those in future builds. Uh, if you're interested in building up the teleprompter, I would recommend going to the specific teleprompter setup video that we have. It's a long form video that breaks it down in a very detailed uh, manner to give you a full setup process. I'm going to work pretty quick through it today since we do have that other resource that you guys can go to. But to start our build, the whole teleprompter system mounts to this rail bracket here. It'll have a sliding piece in the middle that your tripod plate mounts to, and it slides so that you can set the distance that you need. For our purposes today, I'm using a pretty long camera, so I'm going to purposely put this up towards the front about one-third of the distance, and I'll tighten it down with my tripod plate. The tripod plate is what's actually going to lock it in place, so just make sure you tighten it all the way down, and you'll notice that it'll stop sliding once it's fully secured. Then we can go ahead and pop this onto our tripod. The entire build today is going to happen on the tripod, and that's really just due to the uh, restrictions of the teleprompter itself, you're going to have to slowly build it out, and so we're going to do all that here on the tripod. Now one thing I am noticing, I'll show you guys to the side, I actually mounted this slightly too far forward because the front lip of my bracket here is behind my tripod head. That actually in interferes with a uh, setup piece that I'll show you guys in a little bit when we're setting up our monitor. So I'm actually going to go ahead and remove this. All I have to do to adjust this is loosen my camera mounting screws just a quarter turn. It'll go back to sliding along and I can scooch it back a little bit more and secure it down in place once I feel it's at a proper fit. There we go. That's what we're looking for. We've got a little bit of overhang there. And that brings us to the first part of our setup, uh, mounting everything, which is your monitor. This is mounted horizontally so that the glass plane of our teleprompter can reflect it so that the camera can see it and the subject on the other side can see it. So we're going to start by mounting that with two uh, thumb screws here. You'll notice on the plate itself there's a series of small silver brackets that slide along. There'll be four on each side and along both sides of the top. I always start by scooting the top ones all the way to the back. Those are used to mount our camera, so we'll use those there. And then the ones on the side, I'll scoot two up towards the front and two about the middle because we use two on each side for our glass riser and two on each side for our monitor. There's small holes here, and the thumb screws will feed through there to connect to each of those mounting points. So I'm going to go ahead and just set my monitor up. It'll fit around that. And it's just a matter of sliding it along until you see it uh, line up with one of the mounts. I'm going to take my inside mounting point right here, and I'm going to connect it to the farthest forward mounting point on each side. I'm going to purposely hold off on tightening down the back side of this monitor, and I'll show you guys why in just a moment. I'm also not going to tighten these all the way down. I'm going to leave them slightly loose. That allows my monitor to still slide along, and I can still set the distance I want for it in its exact position. 
And for our purposes right now, I can scoot it all the way forward and I'll let it hang off the end just like so. That's going to give me an easy access to my ports in the back of the monitor so I can go ahead and run an AC adapter into it for power and run a HDMI cable into it for video signal. I can run these cables into it after I fully tighten the monitor in place, but I've just found that it's much, much easier to do while the monitor is in the front like this. Uh, because once you get it put up and the glass riser is in place, it's difficult to access those ports below. Then we'll just grab two more of our thumb knobs and we're going to line this up so that our last two mounting points here feed into the last two of our silver mounts. I'll line up my side over here and then just pan it around over here so I can find my other. And I generally use a combination of sliding it down to line it up as well as sliding the silver mount over to where I need just so that everything lines up. You know, it's going to be easier depending on where the location is and what piece you're actually mounting. But once we have all four, we can go ahead and move this forward and tighten it down. I tend to run the monitor as far forward to begin with, and I'll scooch it back as needed uh, based on my setup as we go. Now we're going to attach our glass riser. I'll find my last two silver mounting points and set those about there. And this is our glass riser here. You do want to be careful with this. The glass is very fragile and can break, so be very gentle as you're working with it. Something to be aware of, I'm holding it in place right now, but you'll notice if I let go, my glass is going to fall forward like this. And that's so it can sit in that kind of perfect 45 degree angle to reflect the image of the monitor properly. But there's no safety release to hold it back in place, so you always want to make sure you keep a finger on the front of it. That'll keep it from falling forward and hitting the corners of the monitor and cracking or anything like that, and just keeping it more easy to work with while we're putting it on. We then just need two more of our thumb screws. And you'll notice if we look at a close up here on our side, we have four, uh, I'm sorry, two mounting points on each side the two on this side and the two on the other, and one of them has a channel in the bottom. That actually comes in very, very handy for adjusting our glass riser, and I'll show you guys how to do that in just a little bit. First, we'll start by mounting the back ones, the ones without the channel, because that'll lock my glass riser in place, so I know that it's not going to fall or slide or anything on me as we're working with it. Great, once I have those in place, we can go ahead and let our glass riser go forward. And I'm just going to gently let it find its end point. And I'm going to take my last two and lock down the front. Now I've been purposeful to leave the back mounting screws loose so that it can still slide. That's just going to help us align these last two thumb screws. Careful not to leave your thumb screws too loose or they'll fall out like that.
Great. And this is the part I wanted to show you guys. So now that I have all my thumb screws in place, we can look at this front mount here that still has the channel. I'll lock my back two in place, and you'll notice that I'm able to tilt my monitor up, and it actually adjusts the angle of where the glass riser sits. That'll be a fine-tune adjustment that we'll do after we've gotten camera put in and we're adjusting the exact placement of our monitor in the glass, but it's a very handy tool to use so that you can set the uh, exact angle of your glass in the front to adjust it just slightly and can be very, very helpful, especially for taller subjects. Uh, I myself have found as we're trying to shoot with the teleprompter that we sometimes have to either raise camera up really, really high or tilt slightly up so that I can easily see the teleprompter uh, while I'm reading. So this just helps you tilt the teleprompter so camera can still say, stay level without having to tilt the entire tripod. It is important to note uh, that the entire teleprompter system we're talking about today weighs 17 pounds. So I am building it up on a Sattler V20 tripod. It's just a nice beefy head that's gonna support all of our weight. And it is gonna have our camera mount to the same tripod. So it's good that we have a nice heavy head that can support all of the weight. And you're just basically wanna take 17 pounds plus whatever attachments you plan on putting on it and make sure that your tripod can support all of that weight. We now need to set up our uh, camera plate, but I'm gonna give us an ample amount of working room. And to do that, I'm just gonna ri raise our glass riser up a little bit so that I can scoot it as far forward as I can to get it out of the way while we put our camera platform together. And that's done with just these two thumb screws on the side, and there's two on the other side, and I loosen those and I can actually raise that glass riser. Then I'm just gonna slide it as far forward as I can. And I'll lock them down in place. You always wanna make sure you're tightening your thumb knobs down when you're letting go, because you don't want the glass to fall off or something like that. It can break as it hits the ground. Now we have a series of these small little risers. Uh, these are used in the back here to attach our camera platform. I'm gonna turn this so you guys can see as I'm putting this together. And we'll need to tilt down just a little bit. So I have these four silver mounting points left and I'm just gonna slide two of them forward and leave two here in the back. These risers thread down on top of them, and I'm just gonna thread these down to where they are tight enough to not fall out, but will still slide along the platform. And then you'll notice that each of these still have a thread point in the top, and that's how we'll actually mount our camera platform. Right now, I'm just roughly guessing where these will end up. I'll need to adjust their exact position a little bit, and that's gonna be determined by our camera platform here. You'll notice these screw holes on the side. Those are where you'll actually mount it down to these riser uh, rods, and then this here in the center is used for mounting the camera. So we have a variety of different mounting points. Gives us a lot of versatility. Uh, if you have an extremely long setup, we can run this back a little bit to give us some extra hang off the back, and that'll give us more distance here. We're using the Canon XF705 today, so I'm just gonna run it all the way in the back like so, and you just take a series of flathead screws, and we will line this up. I always start with my back, because those aren't going to move, and those will hold everything in place. So I'm just gonna set a screw in, and same thing, I'm gonna tighten it so it's most of the way tight, but I'm not gonna lock it all the way down. I want everything held in place, but I'd like it to still be adjustable so that I can adjust the exact position before I lock everything down. And then these guys in the front, I can just do a slight turn on the rod itself to loosen at the base, and it'll slide, and I can set its position in the front. And same thing, just run one flat head screw down, and it'll lock it in place.
The kit will come with a variety of risers, so if you're using a short camera, you may want to add an additional riser underneath to lift the camera up a little bit higher. If you're using a tall camera, you may want to use one less riser. It all depends on your setup. Now that I have everything attached, I'm just going to loosen all of my support rods, pull them back as far as I can so everything sits nice, and then I'll twist those to lock them in place with just a small twist of my fingers, and then I'll tighten my flat heads on top to lock everything together. Great. And now comes camera time. Today we're using the Canon XF705. For those of you who aren't familiar with this cam uh, camera, it's the newest camcorder style camera from Canon that supports internal 4K 60 frames per second and records in a new codec, which is an H.265 HEVC codec, to record high quality 422 10-bit internal so that you're getting a massive amount of color information while still having access to that 4K high frame rate. So you have the max amount of options. You'll notice on the side, it's got a 15 times zoom lens built into it for servo zooming. And I found the autofocus to be extremely reliable as well. It's got a small shoulder pad built on the back. So if you need to, you can just easily shoot handheld with it like so. But it also fits very, very well into a broadcast oriented setup like our teleprompter that we're doing here. I have a 3 8 mounting screw that we're just going to run up from underneath to tighten our screw down. But I do need to put a small washer here uh, just because the screw's a little bit longer and this plate is fairly thin. It's just going to add a small bit of distance to make sure everything tightens up properly. So let me turn this so I have access to it a little easier. And then our kit always comes with a long flat head. So I'm actually going to come down through the center here to make sure everything mounts properly. I like to tighten it down with my fingers first, just because it can be difficult to align everything. And once I have it mostly there, I can tighten everything down with the flathead screwdriver. And so I'll just take my flathead, run it up from underneath, and lock it down in place. Then we can go ahead and throw a battery in camera, and it's just a matter of fine-tuning our teleprompter setup. A few things you'll notice if I turn this towards camera is our glass riser is a little bit too tall. We're actually cutting off our camera here on the bottom, so we'll need to drop that down slightly. So I'll go ahead and loosen on the sides. And the exact positioning is going to be determined by your specific camera build and the lens that you're using. Wider lenses are naturally going to require a more fine-tuned fit. For this, we have the servo lens built onto it, so we can zoom in a little bit if we are too wide and seeing our edges there. And then it's just a matter of making sure that the reflector is going to hit properly. For that, I like to turn it so that I can look straight on and just pretend that I'm my subject looking at it. Right now, it does seem like it is slightly too far forward. So I'm going to use that fine-tune adjustment trick that we had talked about. I'm going to loosen my two front knobs on my glass riser, and I'm just going to tilt it back slightly. And then I'll tighten it down to lock those in place. And that's going to lock my riser at a slightly higher angle so that now, when I turn, you can more easily see the full reflection there. The last thing that we'll need to do, you'll notice if you look through, you can see the color on our backdrop coming through the edges of our frame here. There's always a small piece of black cloth included that is uh, stretchy on one side. We're going to hook that into some loops. I'll turn so you guys can see as I do this. There's four loops on the back here. So I'm just going to take my stretchy side. And I'm going to run it around my lens like so. And then I'm going to stretch that around my two top loops and then around the two bottom. Then the rest of this, we can either run it along the whole camera like so. But usually, I like to leave as much of the camera outside as I can for easy settings adjustments. 
So I'm just going to run it around the lens itself, make sure that I get it up underneath the riser. And then I'm just going to cinch it tight so that it closes off all of the excess light around our lens and keeps everything nice and dark so that you can see the reflected image on the other side. Now I'm going to go ahead and power my monitor on. And then on the side here, I just have a very basic broadcast camera set up for a close-up shot. And so I'm just going to step off frame here. And you'll notice that I come into frame on our teleprompter there. And that is the Interatron. So now I could be in an entirely different area, uh, in this case off frame, talking. And I could have a conversation with the interview subject. And this is very, very helpful for interviews that may be very sensitive in subject matter, where the person may want to be alone while they tell their story or something like that. Or if you have a uh, interviewer that needs to be in another room or needs access to other materials, you can do that as well. I also have seen this used for a variety of different setups. I had a documentary shoot uh, last year that used this so that they could hook up a laptop uh, like we would typically do for prompting, but the laptop played archive footage from the subject of the interview so that the interview subject could watch that and react to it live uh, direct to camera, as well as talk about their experience in and around that footage as well. I've also had this used with Skype because a particular interviewer uh, had to be in another part of the world and their interview subject was here in Chicago. And so they set up the teleprompter and they uh, Skype called in for the interview and their subject was able to give that direct to camera uh, interview to this person Skype calling in. And that's just by hooking up a laptop through the HDMI and outputting that Skype call on the display here. Very, very useful tool. And paired with the XF705 here, we get a really nice option for recording. So we can do that high speed and everything. Uh, especially if you only have one camera for an interview, it's useful to shoot in 4K. So that then we have the option to recrop a little bit in post if we want a slightly closer shot or something like that. We have some adjustment there and some flexibility due to that higher resolution. Uh, yeah, super simple setup. As you guys saw, it only took about 20 minutes or so for us to get everything built. Uh, as long as you go in with some practice and some time with the teleprompter ahead of time, it's a very simple setup and definitely not something you should be intimidated with. Uh, if you guys are interested in this setup, uh, it's all this gear right here. It's very, very easy. Let's see if you guys had any questions or anything. Uh, this package is very flexible. Uh, we had the question about whether or not it would come with an operator. We have two packages with it. If you are a filmmaker who are very confident in your capabilities and want to just rent the kit to have access to the teleprompter, you can. We offer that. And it's just the teleprompter itself. You could either add in your own camera, your own tripod, or rent those from us as well. Or we have a teleprompter operator package. We'll, we'll hook you up with all the gear needed minus the camera and an operator to bring all of that to set to shoot and operate for you, either as the teleprompter or they could help set up an Interatron setup like we've done here today to take all of that uh, hassle off of your back so you can focus on the creative side of it. Very, very useful uh, option, especially for those who are looking at limited crew who may not have teleprompter experience. Our operators are very, very skilled and will help you make your project come to life. Any other questions or anything? Well, if you guys have any more pop up, please comment below and let me know. Also, we're streaming live from Studio One. If you guys are looking to stream, we have all of the gear needed to accommodate that. So let us know. Or if you're scared and haven't worked with streaming before, it certainly can be very intimidating. Our partners over at perfectcircle.pro can hook you up with an operator as well as the gear so that they'll handle the complicated side of the stream and you can focus on the creative side and make sure that all the creative aspect of it is going the way that you need and they'll handle the software and all the hardware side of it as well. So check that out if you guys are interested. As always, uh, let us know if you have questions. Visit magrents.com. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for today. This has been the Interatron setup with the AutoQ 17-inch teleprompter and the XF705. 
I'll plan to see you guys tomorrow for another build of the day. Take care.